So today we are uh, studying fifth canto, the pastimes of Bharat Maharaj. And uh, you all know that uh, Bharat Maharaj, a very, very great Rajarshi. So uh, after ruling for many years, now he has in the forest and he is already on a very high platform of devotional service or bhakti. So previously we have seen that uh, Bharat Maharaj is already experiencing the symptoms of bhava bhakti. And now at such a high stage of uh, bhakti, we know that he comes across this uh, uh, deer, baby deer, and his devotional service is getting distracted because of that. So, this is a very surprising phenomenon that uh, someone who is on the platform of Bhava Bhakti, how come his devotional service also gets, uh, how can he also get distracted? That's very really surprising phenomenon. So generally we see <clears throat> that uh, those who are neophyte devotees, uh, those who are sadhakas, so they have stages in their devotional service. For example, uh, Ghanataral and all that, where sometimes their devotional service is very, very strong. They are very, very enthusiastic. And at other times, it is completely opposite. They lose interest in it. And <coughs> their mind is attracted to the material objects or material ideas. So, but... Uh, to see it in the life of a personality like Bharat Maharaj, who has already experienced the best of material things and he has given it up. And uh, now he is already experiencing uh, symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. How can such a person be affected? How can such person's Bhakti be affected? by a deer or something like that. So this is the subject matter you know, which is discussed here in this particular section. In these particular two verses, are you able to hear me clearly? I'm a little sick, so my voice is down. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in these particular two verses, 24 and 25, uh, it is explained that when a person is attached, very much attached to something or something or someone, then uh, his mind, it starts working in a very uh, weird fashion. So he starts thinking about something uh, which does not make sense. So generally such symptoms are seen in those who have material attachment. When someone is overly attached to anything material, then his mind loses the ability of discrimination. And the mind starts thinking in uh, crazy ways. <laughs> so we see here that Bharat Maharaj is acting in a similar way. But the question arises that why someone like Bharat Maharaj has to undergo this kind of a uh, setback, you know, in devotional service. So that we will discuss. Jiva Goswami has, uh, in Bhakti Sandarva, has explained this very nicely. So we'll take the explanation from there. 
So first we read the verse here. Uh, Api Swit Aso Bhagavan Udu Patirenam Brigapati Bhayangata Mataram Brigabalakam Swashrama Pari Grashtam Anukampaya Pripana Jana Vatsalaha Paripati. So many verses in fifth canto are not in particular meter. They are not there. They have to be read without any meter. So we'll go to translation directly. Uh, the verse says that, uh, as we discussed earlier, that when someone is overly attached to anything material, then he might start acting in a very weird fashion, crazy fashion. And we see Bharat Maharaj acting like this, which is very, very surprising. Bharat Maharaj continued to speak like a madman. Seeing above his head the dark marks on the rising moon, which resembled a deer, he said, Can it be that moon, who is so kind to an unhappy man, might also be kind upon my deer, knowing that it has strayed from home and has become motherless? The moon has given the deer shelter near itself, just to protect it from the fearful attacks of a lion. So we know that the deer has, he has gone away in the forest and Bharat Maharaj is not able to find him. And uh, <coughs> so in his separation, he is speaking things like that. He is looking at the moon and is thinking that, uh, is it that the moon has given, given him shelter Moon has a cooling property. So, because he is feeling the fire of separation from that baby deer, so he is thinking that uh, the moon with its cooling property, its cooling nature, should give me shelter and also give the deer shelter and uh, relieve me of this fire of separation and relieve me of the distress which I am feeling. And uh, so he's thinking like that, you know, that uh, uh, okay, next. Him vatmaja vishlesha jaradava dhana shikhabhir upatapyamana ridayasthala Nalinikam maam upashitam rigitanayam shishirsha shishira shantanuram gunita nija vadana salilam ritamaya gavashti bihi sadhyayati ticha. So he says, after perceiving the moonshine, Bharat Maharaj continued speaking like a crazy person. He said, the dear son was so submissive and dear to me that due to its separation, I am feeling separation from my own son. <coughs> due to the burning fever of this separation, I am suffering as if inflamed by forest fire. My heart, which is like the lily, of the land is now burning. Seeing me distressed, the moon is certainly splashing its shining nectar upon me. Just as the friend throws water on another friend who has a high fever. In this way, the moon is bringing me happiness. So, Bharat Maharaj is, he has already left his uh, kingdom his family, his opulences. So he started considering the deer as his son. And now he's remembering his own son also from his uh, uh, previous life, not previous life, previous his uh, existence as a king. So again, he is speaking like a madman, being separated. 
we see this quite often like that. You must have seen that when someone passes away, then those who are very much attached, they start speaking some, you know, gibberish, you know, does not make any sense. So uh, many of us must have experienced this. When someone passes away, the near and dear ones, out of shock, they start speaking some nonsense. Does not make any sense. Similarly, here, because of uh, too much material attachment, uh, Bharat Maharaj is speaking in this way, which does not make any sense. actually. So, Prabhupada writes that what is this concept of uh, throwing water and all that. So, Prabhupada says that according to Ayurvedic treatment, it is said that if one has eye fever, someone should splash him with water after gargling this water. Actually, uh, Vishnu Chakravati Thakur writes that uh, uh, the doctor or the Vaidya, so what he does, he drinks water which has some herbs in it. And then uh, he, he might do like this. You know. So it is some way of removing the fear. So uh, Prabhupada writes, although Bharat Maharaj was very aggrieved due to separation of his so-called son, the deer, he thought that the moon was splashing gargled water on him from its mouth and that this water would subdue his high fever, which was raging due to separation from the deer. So... Bharat Maharaj is thinking here that uh, to remove my fever, the fever of separation which I am feeling, the moon should do something like that. The moon already has uh, cooling properties. So the moon should remove my fear or uh, fever like that. <clears throat> so we see here <laughs> that uh, As we discussed earlier, it is quite understandable when a sadhaka whose mind is not completely absorbed in Krishna or Bhakti uh, deviates for some time from his path of devotion. But how to understand <clears throat> that uh, someone like Bharat Maharaj who is on the platform of Bhava Bhakti. So he is also experiencing something like that. Or he is facing so many obstacles. You know. Generally, the obstacles are faced by the sadhaka in the Anartha Nivrutti stage. And most of the Anarthas are completely finished during Anartha Nivrutti when someone attains Nishtha. So after attainment of Nishtha, also certain subtle offenses might be there which are remaining <clears throat> but most of the uh, offenses uh, which give rise to these obstacles they are completely finished so after that he does not face these kind of problems that again he becomes attached he forgets about devotional service like in previous verses we have seen that uh, Bharat Maharaj now he he forgot about the performance of his sadhana. He is not meditating properly. And uh, he is not doing his sadhana properly. And even when he is meditating, he is thinking of the deer. You know, when he is meditating, the deer is coming and playing in his lap. And uh, Bharat Maharaj is pretending that he is meditating. But actually he is thinking of the deer. <clears throat> so, how... Offenses makes one materially oriented. That is to be understood here. So, <clears throat> so Bharat Maharaj, it is explained uh, in uh, the next verse, twenty sixth verse. <laughs> Can you just uh, read the translation of the next verse also? Yeah. 
So these, these three verses are, uh, it's like uh, they are together. Okay, yeah, please read to yes. Sukadeva Goswami continued, My dear King, in this way, Bharata Maharaj was so overwhelmed by an uncontrollable desire which was manifest in the form of the deer. Due to the fruitive results of the, his past deeds, he fell down from mystic yoga, austerity, and worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If it were not due to his past fruitive activity, how could he have been attracted to the deer after giving up the association of his own son and family? Okay, and so here, just one minute. Here, what we read that uh, Shukdev Goswami is saying that it was due to his past fruitive activity or basically what it means is prarabdha. So, because of his past fruitive activity, he got attracted to the deer. You know, after giving up his own opulence, you know, he was the king of the whole Bhumandal. So, uh, how come such stumbling blocks have come upon him? You know? uh, yeah, so if we read a little further, Prabhupada writes in the translation that uh, this was definitely due to his past karma. Again, the reason which is given here for his distraction is past karma. Past karma means prarabdha basically. What it means is prarabdha. So, now the question comes. Uh, okay, bro. Thanks. So you can. <coughs> How can someone who is experiencing bhava bhakti can be <coughs> affected by prarabdha? So it is very unlikely. Prarabdha is not very strong as uh, bhakti. And what to speak of someone who has already attained Bhava Bhakti. So how come Prarabdha is still affecting that person? So one reason which is given here in the beginning is that all these things are happening, which we are reading here, that uh, Bharat Maharaj, first of all, gets attracted to the deer. And then uh, he starts acting in a crazy manner. So, this is because of his prarabdha. So, what kind of prarabdha? It means that some kind of offense must have been done. Offense in bhakti, offense for devotee. So, some kind of offense was done previously and that is creating an obstacle. So, uh, it is to be understood that uh, you see, prarabdha karma cannot be an obstacle to bhakti. Because it is weaker, bhakti is very strong. It will burn away prarabdha that we read in Bhakti Rasamrita. So the prarabdha karma which is being spoken about here is not actually some sin. You know? It's not some sin. But rather it is the outcome of some offense. Some Vaishnava offense. Because an ordinary sin cannot create obstacle for Bhava Bhakti. That is told by Jiva Goswami. Uh, so, it means that the Prarabdha Karma which is being spoken about here is actually an uh, offense. For example, King Indra Dhyumna, he offended and then he became an elephant, Gajendra. So, some kind of offense like that. Offense to some great sage, offense to a devotee, something like that. So, how can an offense make one absorbed in objects other than bhakti? How can offense can make one absorbed in uh, uh, persons other than the Supreme Lord? And the person will give up the practice of bhakti. How can that happen? <coughs> so we know that Bharat Maharaj is the eldest son of Rishabh Dev, and then 
we renounce the kingdom, he goes to Gandaki, he is worshipping Shalagram. And the doe comes and uh, she delivers the baby deer, I mean, it's a miscarriage. And the baby falls in the river and uh, now he starts living with uh, Bharat Maharaj. And then we see that Bharat Maharaj forgot his worship and meditation. And uh, uh, although we read here that uh, all these things are happening because of past karma. So, Jiva Goswami says that past karma or just karma, you know, karma does not have power to overshadow bhakti. So, what happened to Bharat Maharaj is the effect of some past offense. For example, the example is given, King Indradyumna offended Sage Agastya. And as a result, he was born as an elephant. Agastya was bathing in the river. And Indradyumna, he was also bathing. And he went inside and he caught the feet of uh, Agastya you know, to scare him as if some crocodile has come. So, <clears throat> so he becomes an elephant in the next life. And then in the next life, his feet are caught by the crocodile. So when King Indradyumna, who was also a pure devotee, we all know that uh, Lord Jagannath in uh, Puri was manifested by the devotion of King Indradyumna. So King Indradyumna is no ordinary person. He is a pure devotee. But when he offends Agastya, so he, he is born as an elephant and he becomes absorbed in material pleasures. So the message is that if someone is losing interest in bhakti, if someone is losing interest in bhakti and is getting attracted to material objects, relations, power, position, then one must know that it's an outcome of some previous offense. So now we understand that, okay, karma does not affect bhakti. So offense must have been there. Like in Bharat Maharaja's case or Indradyumna's case, there are many examples like that. That person was a very great devotee and uh, still... Uh, it's not that he went back to God or something. Any other example which comes to your mind from Bhagavatam like that? Yes. One example is uh, Vritrasur Maharaj. So Chitraketu. Chitraketu already a uh, uh, great devotee. And uh, after he dies, he's supposed to go back to Godhead. He's a devotee of Aniruddha, Lord Aniruddha. And, uh, but he is born again as a, a demon, Zitraso. <clears throat> so, so uh, we see here that an offense, if an offense is there, then one will lose interest in Bhakti. And he will get attracted to material objects. But now again, the question can be raised that uh, what was what did Bharat Maharaj do wrong? <clears throat> was it not proper for him to show compassion to a baby deer? Or the act of saving and taking care of the baby deer was not actually wrong, but to become totally absorbed to the baby deer, it was a mistake. And uh, Bharat Maharaj, he started thinking himself as the savior and protector of the deer. And he forgot about uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is actually the savior of everybody. So now the question comes that uh, 
these uh, obstacles in bhakti they come in the beginning stages but someone who is already a pure devotee for example indrajum so why such a thing happens in his life that again he has to become a demon bharat maharaj he has to become a deer you know indradumna he has to become elephant so why is such a thing you know is bhakti not so powerful that uh, it can save you from this kind of offenses or uh, what uh, what is the impetus for a pure devotee to commit this kind of an offense if someone is already a pure devotee and what is the impetus that uh, which is impelling him to uh, uh, act in such a way this is also a doubt if someone is already purified why he will act like this why he will commit an offense so jeeva goswami explains that uh, the supreme lord creates obstacles for his devotee to increase his own so some people are of the opinion that uh, krishna intensifies the normal prarabdha karma of devotees just to increase their hankering for him so bhagavatam also describes that uh, bharat maharaj's desire to attain the lord in his next life uh, increased very much when he received the body of a deer another example of this in is seen in the past life of narad muni so narad muni was the young son of a maid servant and uh, we read in the first canto that uh, narad muni as the son of maid servant when the mother died and he went to the forest in search of the lord so he had already attained the state of rati or love and he also got the darshan of the supreme lord one time but uh, the lord preserved a trace of material desire in him to magnify his efforts to attain him so that's why uh, when uh, narad muni as the son of maid servant he gets the darshan of the lord so the lord tells him that uh, my dear boy you have seen me once and now you are not fit to see me again because i cannot be seen by imperfect yogis who have some contamination remaining in their heart so the meaning is very clear that some little contamination was remaining in the heart of narad muni as the son of the maid servant so bharat maharaj is situated on a very high platform of bhakti and uh, in these particular verses it is explained or the previous few verses like you know the verses 11 12 13 uh, it is explained that uh, he is already manifesting symptoms of love while engaged in bhakti so it is very hard to believe that some past offense could overpower his bhakti moreover it was said that as long as one has offenses one cannot manifest such symptoms of rati you know so if someone has rati or love then one cannot manifest the symptoms of bhav bhakti it's not possible and if someone already has bhav bhakti then where is the question of offense where is the question of any karma so jeeva goswami says that what we see happening here in life of bharat maharaj is actually the will of the supreme lord that is a real explanation which is given here so he says that it is the supreme lord's will that bharat maharaj becomes attached to the deer and uh, it is the lord himself who attracted the mind of bharat maharaj in the form of a deer so because he is already 
having love for Krishna. So who else can attract his mind? And he did it in order to increase Bharat Maharaja's hankering to attain himself, attain the Lord. You know. So the Supreme Lord sometimes covers the knowledge of a devotee for this purpose. And this happened to many devotees as we discussed earlier, like uh, Indra Yamuna and Chitra Ketu. Also we see in the life of Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj is the best of the pure devotees, Mahabhagavatas. But uh, sometimes his knowledge also got covered. He put a dead snake on the shoulder of the uh, Brahmana who is meditating. So when the king Parikshit Maharaj was when he was then cursed. He gave up the kingdom and he was hearing Bhagavatam for seven days without eating, drinking. You know, so we see that his intelligence was also covered. How can it be covered? This is already a pure duty. So the answer is it is Krishna's will. So the same king Parikshit Maharaj who became angry at the meditating Brahmana. Because why he became angry? Because he did not get water to drink. He was thirsty. And I don't think he was thirsty for a long time. Maybe a few hours. The same king, he was able to go without water for seven days and seven nights. So, uh, his thirst is uh, unprecedented because it was manifested by the will of Krishna. So when we see these kind of pastimes happening in Bhagavatam, we understand that they are actually happening by the will of the Lord to set some example. So Narad Muni is also an example we took. You know. So uh, Narad Muni was a boy and Mahabhagavatas, Bhakti Vedantas, they came to stay at the house of a Brahmana where Narad Muni's mother was serving. She was a maid servant. And then the mother died by a snake bite and Narad Muni left home. He went to the forest and when he went to the northern direction and uh, crossed many villages, forests, like that. And uh, whatever he had learned from the Bhaktivedantas, he was doing that. He was meditating. And after some time, he also got a vision of the Supreme Lord. But soon the vision disappeared. And uh, Narad Muni again became restless to see the Supreme Lord. But then he heard from the voice, the sky, voice from the sky, that uh, uh, he'll not be able to see you know, the Lord again because the yogis who have even a little contamination, they cannot see the Lord. So then what happened? Uh, Krishna made him feel as though he was still subject to material desires. And thus he could not see him. Actually he was not. So this made Narad Muni as the boy more intensely absorb himself in meditation. And Krishna reveals the same principles to the gopis also in the 10th canto. So Krishna tells in 10th uh, canto that I don't reciprocate the love of devotees. Love me. And uh, sometimes I don't reciprocate. Not always. Sometimes I don't reciprocate the love of even the devotees who love me or who have love for me. In prema. But I behave in this way so that they can fully become absorbed in my thoughts. Just like a person who loses a treasure after finding it. And it becomes en and he becomes engrossed in the thoughts of that treasure. And now he knows nothing else. So Krishna does like that sometimes. So the same principle has been applied to Bharat Maharaj in this pastime here. And this is confirmed by the absorption of Bharat Maharaj in his next birth as a deer. So when he takes his next birth as a deer, he is very much focused. As a deer, he is also not he is eating some dry leaves and uh, not associating with other deers. 
and then his next birth as Jad Bharat again is very much focused. So this is confirmed by the future births of Bharat Maharaj. <coughs> so um, basically five or six effects of uh, offense are explained by Jiva Goswami in this section with uh, different examples. But uh, we will not study that. So basically we wanted, I wanted to tell here that uh, what we are seeing in the life of Bharat Maharaj, what is the reason? So he is already on the uh, platform of Bhava Bhakti. So karma cannot be the reason because karma is not potent enough to create an obstacle in bhakti. Karma means paap of unya and all those things. So now karma can be understood as offense. But now the next question comes that someone who is already perfected his life, why he will commit this kind of an offense? So the answer which is given is that sometimes the Lord it is by the Lord's will. The Lord wants to intensify that devotee's desire for him so that he comes back to him quickly and he also wants to set an example. Some special pastime he wants to create which can be created only through a pure devotee, not by sadhaka. So that is why we see that sometimes even great personalities like Bharat Maharaj, Indra Dimna Maharaj, Parikshit Maharaj, Chitraketu Maharaj, they also do some kind of a blunder. But that blunder is to be understood as the will of the Lord because they are already pure devotees. So, we can stop here. Any questions you can ask? Thank you so much, Prabhuji, like for making it clear, uh, like uh, how Bharat Maharaj, why he is getting attached to the ear and how he's behaving crazy. I think many of the doubts have been cleared for all devotees. This is it. Uh, so devotee slides are already unmuted, so they can un unmute and ask any questions or clarifications to Hare Krishna. Relation duties, you can unmute uh, lines are already unmuted. Hare Krishna Prabhu Andhra Pranams, thank you for giving association today. Wonderful uh, sharing of this. Prabhu, I just had one question. Um, that is, in this particular case, it was uh, deer that you attached to. So, what happens if a person get, gets attached to a cow? Will that be more in a better destination, not in the context of birth. I mean, in, in, in this case, I'm just saying generally and saying if we are over attached to cow, what uh, is it? it depends on what kind of attachment that is. So, attachment can be on a material platform. For example, people in this world are they are attached to dogs, they are pet dogs. So <laughs> In the same way, one can become attached to cows. So, which is better than being attached to dogs. But still, it is uh, on a material platform. So, being attached to cows basically means that we have to serve the cows, protect the cows, and uh, understand that uh, Krishna loves the cows. So, uh, love will translate into service. So we should serve the cows and we should understand that although we are serving the cow, we are protecting the cow, whatever service we are doing, ultimately the protector, the caretaker is Krishna. This is the problem which happened with Bharat Maharaj. So taking care of the deer is not a wrong activity. But uh, he was thinking that he is the only protector and he forgot about Krishna. 
So Krishna actually is the real protector. Does not mean that we don't do anything in this world. What it means is that we continue to do our thing. For example, if you are serving the cow, you continue to do that. But you have to understand that ultimately the cow's body is temporary, your body is temporary. And the real protector is Krishna. Everybody, if they go back to Krishna, then uh, that is the real uh, attainment. So, being attached to anybody, whether it is uh, Pau or uh, our family members or anything, that is uh, natural to some extent because we stay with them. At the same time, we should have knowledge that uh, uh, that these relationships are temporary and ultimately we are supposed to go back to Krishna. Then there is no problem. Otherwise, uh, uh, one might become a cow also in the next life. That is also possible. So, Gaur Govind Maharaj, he had one disciple. So, we all know that Gaur Govind Maharaj was a very, very exalted disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, so, he had one lady disciple. She was old lady. And uh, so, this lady, she she told uh, her Guru Maharaj, Gaur Govind Maharaj, that uh, she wants to become a cow in the spiritual world. So, Gaur Govind Maharaj told that uh, don't imagine things. Don't get attached to something which is imagined. You perform your bhakti and whatever your sarupa is, it will be revealed to you whenever you are qualified. So, but anyway, the lady, uh, whether she could take the instruction or not, so she left her body. And uh, then uh, the disciples, they asked uh, Gorgoin Maharaj that uh, where did she go? What was her destination? So Gorgoin Maharaj, he saw in his meditation that uh, the lady, she has become a Kamadhenu cow in the heavenly planets. In the heavenly planets also, <laughs> there are Kamadhenu cows. Just like we see in the past time of uh, Vishwamitra, you know, Vashishta had this cow and she can fulfill all desires. So in the heavenly planets also, these cows are there. And uh, she was the best of the cows in heavenly planets, that Maharaj said. So then the disciples asked him that, uh, so why she went to heavenly planets? So Maharaj said that uh, because she was overly attached to the idea of becoming a cow. But uh, uh, her devotional service was not fructified completely. And uh, neither that is her Swarupa. So, so she became the best of the cows in spiritual world. It is also very exalted. These cows are worshipped by all the demigods, Indra himself. But that is not what we want to become. So, material attachment can lead to uh, problems. So, if Bharat Maharaj can become deer, then we can become cow also. That is possible. But if it is done with proper knowledge and understanding, then uh, there is no problem. It's like that. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for actually explaining this so nicely. So, so it's a question of, I mean, um, what you said very nicely is to serve the cow. It's not like... Serving the cow for the pleasure of Krishna is much better than yes, yes. putting the right. other way. So can you serve to... the cow? You should serve the cow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like people they love their cats and dogs. Uh, uh, so what they do, they play with them. And uh, so playing with cows is also very good. But the idea behind 
our relationship with cow is more than play or just petting the cow or scratching her uh, body. It is more that uh, it's a very respectful relationship actually. So the cow is the mother and all the demigods, they reside in the mother. So whenever we come across the cow, first we touch her feet and then uh, we can do some service which can also include petting her or uh, scratching her or something like that. But uh, we don't uh, pet or scratch the cow like other pets, like people do in this world today, just for play or sad, you know, satisfaction. So the understanding there is very different. So it's like a mother. So then we serve that person like respectfully. Of course, sometimes because uh, it's an animal, so like the cowherd boys and all them, they have to uh, use the danda and all if the cow is not listening. But uh, that is okay. Generally, we should uh, serve the cow very respectfully, treat them very respectfully. Thank you very much. Prabhu, in Hare Krishna Prabhu, in one of the lectures they said, it is because of Nama Aparada, he has fallen down, they say, Prabhu. Nama Aparada? <laughs> Nama Aparada, that is not, I have not read that. So this, uh, the fall down of uh, Bharat Maharaj is explained in great detail actually in Bhakti Sandar by Jeev Goswami. And uh, the only reason why he fell down is by, because of Krishna's will. So we should take uh, an explanation which is given by the previous Acharyas. We should not. Uh, so we should only speak what is being spoken by the Acharyas. Then we are on the safe side. Otherwise, we can say so many things that Nama Prabhu also. Maybe he was not chanting properly, so Nama Prabhu. But what is the cause of that Nama Prabhu that we discussed today? If someone is already on the platform of Bhava Bhakti, then why he will do a Prabhu? So the answer is that it was the will of the Lord. So that's why when discussing the Shastras, we should just uh, repeat what the Acharyas have spoken. And if they have not spoken something, then we should also not speak, not speculate. So, so this is clearly told here. Thank you, Pram. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat Pranams. Uh, thanks for that wonderful lecture, Prabhu. Pra, uh, Prabhu, I have on this basic doubt, Prabhu. When I read uh, Bhagavad Gita 7.28, I understood that uh, we come to Krishna consciousness after all our sins are uh, burnt off. Is that correct or not, Prabhu? What is 7.28? Can you tell the answer? <laughs> we come to Krishna consciousness only when our sins are completely finished. Yeah, that is... Persons have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful reactions are completely eradicated are freed from the dualities of disease. And they engage themselves in my service with determination. So what it says here is that those who are already engaged in bhakti with determination, so they their uh, sinful activities are almost eradicated. If we are not able to do it with determination, it means that there are certain 
offenses as we discussed today, which are still there, which are creating obstacle. So it does not mean that only after complete eradication of sins one comes to bhakti. It's not like that. What it means is that those who are engaging in devotional service with determination. So when we see these kind of people who are very determined uh, with great determination, they are engaging in devotional service. Their devotional service is very strong. Then we should understand that this person uh, must have acted piously in previous lives. And his sinful reactions are almost clear. That is to be understood. So this does not mean that everybody who is practicing their, uh, their, their pious in previous life. So uh, bhakti does not have, does not need a pre-qualification. By the mercy of devotees, anybody can come to bhakti. But uh, although anybody can come to bhakti, but uh, if they have very bad samskar from previous birth, or this birth, then definitely it creates an obstacle. So that we have ourselves experienced in our life. We all have had some uh, bad qualities or habits. And when we come to bhakti, then they create an obstacle. So these bad habits or desires, they are coming from previous life. Only. So uh, anybody can come to bhakti by the mercy of devotees. But um, the samskaras, they create an obstacle. They can also be overcome. Uh, but for that, one has to be very, very determined and one needs guidance of a guru. Then they can also be overcome. So like we see in the case of Mrigari the hunter. So he, he, he was able to overcome all his uh, samskaras bad samskaras by association of Narada, by mercy of Narada. So that is possible, but it's very rare. So what it means here is this, that if we see a person who is very determined, we can understand that he has a good past. So this does not mean that uh, everybody who is chanting Hare Krishna or who comes to temple, he is he has a completely pious past. It's not like that. We see in case of many disciples of Prabhupada also that uh, their past was not very good. But when they came to devotional service by the mercy of Prabhupada, they got transformed drastically. So, but because their past was quite bad, most of them again left. They fell down to some anartha or the other. And some people have, are still there practicing today. They are preaching all over the world. So we can understand that definitely they must be special people. So they must have acted piously in previous lives. That's why they have they are able to play such a major role in uh, their own bhakti and uh, also in life of others. That is what we understand. Hare Krishna, thanks for the wonderful explanation, Prabhu. It gives so much uh, meanings to so many things. Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Dandavats. Hare Krishna, you have the last question. Radharan Mata, you want to say something? No, no, not a question, Prabhu. Prabhu, we are seeing you after a long time. Can we have Darshan of Govardhan, Prabhu? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you see? Uh, we can't see. Can you can see? 
No problem. We can. Yeah. Yes. No, we yes. Now we can. See. So you see the. You see uh, behind those houses is Giriraj, and uh, like in middle of screen now you see the white temple on top of Giriraj. Yes. That is the place where the deity of uh, Gopal was found. I mean, uh, he was installed. And today is known as Srinathji. He is in uh, uh, Gujarat. You know. So that is the place where Madhavendra Puri he installed Gopal. That white temple on top of the on top of Govardhan. Yes. Oops. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Brother Dachi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Thanks for the session.